it actually cannot be that this pressure is re-established because otherwise we will not get this dynamic component. But the most, in, most impressive uh, conclusion about this is that finally we will not return into order like the potential theory is trying to argue. Welcome back to Fractal Aerodynamics. My name is Felix Schaller and I am the host of this channel. In this chapter, chapter 4, we would like to talk about energy conservation. This is the most important chapter of this, of this theory. So, because we are in the previous chapters more talked about lift theories and flaws or inconsistence in the potential theory, we now put this um, straight to the ground and see what's the real reason why there is a contradiction in the potential theory and how can we solve this problem with another model that can solve all the contradictions that are in the potential model. All right, what's so special on the theory that uh, the world is calculating for over 200 years in fluid dynamics, aerodynamics and such and come up with these odds that, that are not making sense at all. So, f first of all, we have mysterious behavior in, inside the theory that that actually there is no resistance of objects opposing, opposing fluid. That means if we have a if we have an object inside a fluid, this is my object, and it's and it's um, opposed to fluid that is flowing around the object. There is no opposing force of the fluid against the object because we have this so-called um, clover pressure distribution that we have a lower pressure field at the bottom and the top and positive pressure fields at the front and the end. So and that's why it's argued that actually by this model the, the object will not have any resistance. But because of Ludwig Prattl, he, he discovered the, the boundary layer uh, which in a way has a shearing inside the fluid where the fluid itself has a sticky behavior on the surface itself. So when you argue with the fluid is not sliding on the surface, you have a shearing in the, in, inside the fluid which by viscosity of the fluid itself creates the, the resistance then. Such models like Navier-Stokes and other uh, fluid simulation simulation models are built on this um, boundary layer condition that finally you introduce friction inside inside the model, but actually by by pure definition this model has no resistance. Also, because we have no resistance by the Helmholtz roots we have also no turbulence, because turbulence is argued that they must, be, they must come out of a resistance. Without the resistance, without the momentum change, because momentum has a certain momentum conservation, 
that without a object revolving in one direction, there must be another object revolving in the opposite direction. So, in fact, we need we need momentum conservation, which means that when something wants to roll in one direction, uh, another mass has to move in the direct other direction. Otherwise, no turbulence could ever exist. But the nature shows us that turbul turbulence actually does exist. And we will explain now in this chapter why it happens. And give an explanation for all these, these mysteriums that are given in the current fluid dynamics theory. And because we have no resistance, there is no momentum change on the object itself. This means also by that we obtain no lift force. Because we just reshaped the object in a different, uh, a different way, that it now looks like an airfoil. And then the fluid itself flows a bit different around this object. But again, we will not obtain any, any momentum change because there is no uh, force opposed to the object. Also symmetric behavior, um, which means because modeling with potentials, th this means that we have a energy conservation by potential, that means we receive energy out of a potential and by returning to the, into the original state, we put the energy back into the potential. This means there's also no explanation for entropy. and chaos. But we will also talk about this and explain the reason of entropy and chaos because it's, it is heavily attached to this problem. So finally we see that we'll all sum up at the end. But everything after another. So, step by step. Uh, as mentioned in other channels, uh, other chapters before, uh, we criticized the inconsistence, inconsistent me mechanics that brought up everything. Like, why is there a certain low pressure in the narrow section of a tube system? Or if we have a tube that has a constriction and then an expansion again, like this. We have a tube system that has a constriction and then an expansion again, a diffuser. So it behaves convex and then diffuse and this. And we have a, here a, a narrow cross-section and here the, 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 the cross-section are the same, A1, A1, A2. So in this part we obviously would need an acceleration of the fluid that it can fit through this narrow cross-section with a much higher speed and thus the potential theory argues that uh, by that we need low pressure to, uh, to explain the energy conservation. But in, in this chapter we will show that there is another explanation for this. Also not violating anything else like volume conservation and all these other conditions that must be matched to fulfill the um, correctness of the model. Finally, the potential model needs to introduce virtual energy to argue the potential, uh, um, the energy that is withdrawn from the static pressure into the dynamic, the, into the dynamic pressure uh, 
and by that it needs to be argued a, a virtual energy that really is not really measurable but it's introduced to fulfill the um, energy conservation laws. One point I forgot is momentum conservation. This model is not talking about momentum conservation at all because in this narrow cross-section there happens an acceleration and by that you have an impulse change which means that this tube system would act somehow like a rocket but actually this is not argued or considered in, in the whole potential theory. Step by step we will go through all these points and then unsolve this um, this um, unsolved questions that are still open in the current fluid dynamics theory. All right, let's start with um, the explanation. To understand it a bit better, um, I will phrase some parts of the last chapters where we discussed a little bit of the asymmetric behavior of fluids. Why? It happens that when I have a vacuum cleaner with a strong uh, turbine sucking or transporting a lot of air, that when I approach an object like a feather or so with this vacuum cleaner, then the distance where this air has effect is very, very close or very short. While when I have a hairdryer with much smaller motor it can blow something meters away. But why is this the way? Therefore we have to return to a tube system to understand the conditions a bit better. Let's paint a classic tube system how the, the um, mathematics like Bernoulli and Giovanni Venturi made their considerations of fluid dynamics in the 17th, 18th century. Like they thought when I have a cross section like this and then it goes back to the same cross section like we call it A1 and we put the narrow cross section in the, in the middle we call it A2 that somehow the same amount of fluid, we call this Q1, must pass through that cross section at the same time. So this is this means volume conservation, which means that there comes the speed. We call it V1. And Somehow, because we have volume conservation, the cross-section returns to the same, same diameter. The, the speed finally has to return to the same speed. But here we have a little problem that, that in this cross-section the same amount of fluid, Q1, has to pass through with then with a much higher speed. So this is then the same volume than this. But in the same amount of time the speed V2 must or the, the mass must, must pass a much longer distance to pass the same amount of mass through that narrow cross-section. And by that those mathematicians in this in this in these times thought that energy that is here uh, must in a way be re-established here otherwise we have a violation in the energy conservation and as we know there's no violation ever proven we take this as fact or as a condition uh, where we bind our, our whole considerations on it. So we do not allow energy conservation, violation. So we, we, accept, we, we, we 
constrain everything on energy conservation to to explain our con or to to construct our considerations so they thought well if there is a slower speed then somehow the kinetic energy must rise here and then because of the cross section returns to the same diameter the old kinetic energy is restored otherwise so they they claim the energy conservation or the volume conservation the energy conservation and volume otherwise what one of these rules are, is violated if we not return to same speed same cross-section and everything so then they argued like as known in classic mechanics with rigid bodies in a gravity field that somehow like in a gra uh, ob rigid objects in a gravity field uh, a similar behavior must happen in fluid dynamics that means that we have a static pressure so so we have high static pressure how we can explain this yeah let's say this so we we are we make a diagram in here where we argue static pressure and this is r on all pressure p and over x so when we transform this to that other diagram in some ways somehow the, the kinetic energy must rise so we have an increase in kinetic energy it is now yeah a bit lower but let's say we have all overall energy amount that is always constant it's always the same but in our part of the acceleration the kinetic kinetic energy goes up but then we also observe that the pressure is going down no? so we have lower pressure here so this is p2 this is p1 and somehow they are the have different levels of pressure static pressure or the con or like 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 everything is 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 constant like like we have p static pressure p dynamic that's what you learn in any aerodynamics lesson that you have to always satisfy this this energy conservation condition so when the fluid is passing through this narrowed cross section it somehow must adapt to the to the old cross section and has to slow down and because of slowing down the momentum of this fluid has to return to its own old speed so a deacceleration happens here an acceleration happens and here a deacceleration when we model this as you would say in a in this in this consideration consideration as a as a mechanic model then you have to, you would say then when the fluid is reaching this part and it has to accelerate then somehow there comes an opposing force in this direction a mass inertia we call it m times a vector that is the opposing force to the acceleration and because of the opposing force of the acceleration we have a static pressure that is pushing in this direction we reduce it to a vector because uh, pressure is a scalar force but then we reduce it to a vector so to say that the integral from here to here like this integral the force is equivalent to well actually the opposing force that is needed to uh, to accelerate the fluid that is um, this amount of the pressure 
in a vector direction, we say, yeah, f delta. delta. So, because of the mass inertia is the opposing force to this pressure difference, like this um, pressure delta, F delta, we obtain at lower pressure here because um, the acceleration is withdrawn from the static, static pressure. But then again, because of the deacceleration of the fluid, we, we become the, the pressure re-established by deaccelerating, which means that we have a, um, I know, wipe this away. So, mass times acceleration in this direction, whereas the static force is again re-established. So the static pressure again has, has a high, higher, high pressure again. Because of the deacceleration of the fluid, the static pressure gets re-established. So far, the conclusions from the potential theory. So, so the, the mathematicians like Venturi and Bernoulli thought that somehow this um, static pressure has to return to its original state. Because if not, we have a energy conservation validation recorded. So, Alarm, if this is not present, energy conservation is violated. And because of, of this rule, nobody ever questioned this correlation or this um, mandatory constraint. But there, there is a little contradiction here. I don't know if you, if you, if you recognize it, but coming from the field of dynamic mechanics for acceleration, you cannot have an op opposing force that is in a way ne not neutralizing your, your forces. For an acceleration, you always need, you need an, an, uh, a static imbalance in the mechanic system. That is filled out with an acceleration or in a, um, an inertial force that is opposing an acceleration ambition of the mass. Like if you have more static force uh, over here and less static force over here, then the, the equation or the the mass inertia is filling in the difference between those two static forces. That means automatically in this mechanic system there must be less static force in this area. We, we're not considering at the moment this part of, of our model. So like forget this, this part um, I wipe it out for you, that you not get distracted. So, uh, to actually allow, and there is the contradiction, to actually allow acceleration in that system, there has to be a, a force that is lower than, than here, or the pressure, if you're thinking in scalar dimensions or, or not in vectors, then you say, the scalar viewpoint uh, would be low pressure or in a vector viewpoint uh, a, a higher vector or a stronger vector in this direction than a smaller vector of static force in this direction like 
we call this F2, F1, sorry, F1, F2. And then F1 bigger than F2. All right? So this is our constraint. It is, it is a must, because if this F2 is not smaller than F1, we cannot add a dynamic component into the system. Like F1 equals F2 plus our, I just call it M times A, our dynamic component. Like this is our, our component that allows us a dynamic acceleration of the fluid. And without having a lower pressure here, which is compensating by the acceleration, we will not have any dynamic situation in this fluid system. So everything would be rigid and, and conserved or stiff, rigid, stiff, whatever you call it, because we cannot allow a force inequality or we cannot, uh, um, or because of the force two, is, is less than, than force 1 um, that is filled in by a dynamic component, we only then we can allow make, um, dynamic acceleration or dynamic motion at, at all. So, but the existing of a lower force or lower static force is not obvious. So, we, we, we know that then in some way we have a, a certain static pressure level and that in a way has established in this tube system. So it is not obvious how can it be established that, that there is a section where there is less static force. How, how will this happen in a mechanic system where every force at the end must be summed up? That we, in a one, one part, we just have less static force and then again we have more or higher static force that um, this con condition is not possible in a mechanic system because a internal inequality of forces is, is mechanically not, not um, projectable or it's, it's not, you cannot model it. Well, you can model it mathematically. Uh, you can model everything mathematically. You can say, yeah, because of there is an acceleration, you can say less force than here, but in a physical system, uh, you cannot tell just parts of your mechanical system where there is less force existing. Like, uh, by what? Why, why should there be all forces want to always to uh, equilibrate each, uh, each other? And you don't, cannot, you, you know, you're not can just introduce a lower static force by, by some reason with no argumentation uh, that that is a lower force just to argue a, a, a dynamic uh, acceleration. So it actually cannot be that this pressure is re-established because otherwise we will not get this dynamic component. We always need a force system where the, the static pressure or the forces cannot be re-established. Um, but then we have another act of violation. We, uh, we say, well, another energy conservation violation, speed remains, kinetic energy, but the cross-section again returns to this old, old speed and by that it's impossible that, that we just have a speed 2 by, by, um, by returning to the old cross-section, because then we have a volume conservation violation. So, volume conservation is violated. violated. Hmm. But 
how we will solve this dynamic problem that uh, the dynamic pressure or the static force cannot be reestablished otherwise the dynamic dynamic uh, force has no has it will be will be um, equilibrated by the static force so it will just be it will just be shortened out it will be shortened out and and uh, the static pressure just remains by this and we have no motion at all as i already mentioned so we need an in, a, in an unbalanced force system that that finally allows an acceleration and it means that we need believe it or not a static pressure that will not return but then how we will solve this problem i show you so how are we going to solve this with with this mechanic construction in the fluid we have a volume conservation mylotation because obviously the kinetic energy must remain at its old speed but because we are returning to the old cross section we get a contradiction that that the fluid obviously obviously cannot move with the old speed v2 by passing a, a bigger cross section of a1 because then the amount of volume per time q is uh, uh, delta v and delta t um, so the volume per time is uh, is no longer valid with this construct construction but how we will solve this anyway when keeping a lower static force with um, with the same kinetic energy so we still have the energy conservation fulfilled but we can also fulfill the volume conservation by that we have to go into a more a different um, observation or viewpoint uh, we take not the perspective of a fluid mass but of the the perspective of a, a single particle that is moving inside that fluid and this and this particle is not bound to move in one direction but also can move in different ways or it can move inside this area revolving for instance by revolving inside this inside this plane it still can have the, the motion vector v1 in that direction but another component for instance in this direction we how you call it we y maybe well we say this is or we a uh, because it's moving inside the plane a motion vector that is that is um that is uh, orth orthogonal to the to the um to the motion direction of the fluid where this particle hand can have a higher higher speed for instance Mo moving inside the plane would be one op option but there would be other uh, degrees of freedom um, we will consider so so um, so this particle instead could have a higher speed 
um, for itself. But um, but it uh, matters are related to what? Yeah. So energy is always a, re a relation. A relation. Um, dimension, a relation dimension or relation um, value, a relation value that only becomes real when compared to something else. So masses with different impulse, like uh, one impulse, this, or momentum, sorry, momentum, English, um, two comets, And moving in in space, one is moving in this direction, and the other moving in that direction. So, so the, the energy between these objects. So it's always. So it's. So it's always relative. You 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 need always a comparing a comparing object. How uh, to 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 what you you want to measure the kinetic energy, and it always depends. Like this is momentum two, and um, depending on on. Uh, which motion direction relative to the others the, 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 the energy between this object is is established. So so also in here it depends on what you compare the momentum of one particle to something else. And uh, as we know that the momentum also needs to be conserved, well, momentum conservation. This particle needs to keep its momentum, but the momentum can be um, deflected or, or can be um, the momentum can be Yeah, you can say the momentum can be deflected or the the attracted, um, and and by and when you have a orthogonal force to an object, so this object is moving. Well, let's go back to this. We have an object moving. And there is an orthogonal speed uh, force. It will not affect the momentum so far, but the tra trajectory of the object itself. So when you have a centripetal force that is constrained to a point, there is an existing force but the momentum remains the same. So momentum, momentum is the same. So now when we have an attracting force, then, then, then the mass starts to rotate around a attractor point. And by that we can introduce rotation momentum inside the fluid, which means that the momentum of the fluid that currently has a directed momentum can 
receive a rotation momentum by attracting attractor points which uh, force the fluid particles to revolve around its, its uh, origin. Like for instance, we have a attractor point here and a particle that starts with the speed of V2 and then it revolves around that attractor. The attractor itself can move with a certain speed of V1. So then V2 is in this, in this position constructed out of a V X, a X component, we don't know, or it's uh, just a yeah, component, plus our V1 from the attractor point now, <coughs> where, uh, <coughs> where we, we now measure a speed that is uh, the same as V2 at this point. <clears throat> but then gets deflected by an attractor with a, diff, diff, a certain force, centripetal force, and now it starts to revolve around this point here and in this upper part. Then we get we receive V3 observed from our direction. So we we are the observer, and um, because. Um, uh, because it, it, it depends from where you look, uh, which kinetic energy you are observing. Um, are you looking from, from this point or are you looking from, from our point of view? And depending on, on where you compare the momentums to each other, the kinetic energy is, is measured. So at the moment we're just looking from our perspective, and from our perspective in this po in this in this in this point, the particle has the speed of v two, like like in the cross section, in this, in this narrowed cross section, but then it revolves around the attractor with the same revol revolving speed around the around the attractor. So compared to attractor. It, uh, it has the speed Vx. It always keeps the speed Vx around the attractor while the attractor itself moves with the speed v, V1. And from our perspective, we, we observe a third speed that is V3, that is V1 minus Vx. So when we graph our speed on an x-axis, we will observe this particle starts with a low speed, then it goes into the cross section, receives the high speed acceleration, and then it starts revolving around the attractor and by that the mean if we if we just take an average uh, a global a global average of all particles moving then we will receive, uh, we say, we mean value, no, mean, or oh, we can call it V mean, yeah, mean value. So I wipe this off. Uh, mean value, which is the 
average of, um, or we can say um, like this, certain average of um, So, so this is a kind of average of all the vectors where we finally return the v1 as a, me um, a mean value, a mean speed value of all the vectors of the particles, uh, speed vectors, um, in average, and um, <clears throat> by that, by that we just observe, or or that is what 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 Bernoulli and Venturi is observing. They said they, they just said, yeah, the speed is moving at its old speed v one. So we need to argue about v1 to to fulfill the, the the to fulfill the energy conservation law. But actually, looking closer, the the v1 is just an average uh, a mean value of all all particle motions that are happening after passing the cross section a narrow cross section. Um, the average speed of all all particles, but inside or related to the attractors that are moving, the particle speed is uh, different. So they have a much higher uh, particle speed, and thus the kinetic energy uh, is then cons converted into a rotation momentum. So this part is now rotation momentum and so we receive a energy conservation by fulfilling all all these uh, three um, these three conditions we have an energy conservation by the particle speed is remaining at this old speed, um, the particle speed, uh, particle energy is remaining at this old speed to fulfill this acceleration condition that dynamic forces only can exist where there is inequivalence of static forces. Only when there is inequivalence of static forces, you can have dynamic force, uh, dynamic motion. And to fulfill that condition for dynamic motion, you need inequality. And this inequality can only happen by unequal pressure levels before the acceleration and after the acceleration. This opens up a wide, a huge amount of arguments uh, that can be um, built on top of that, that idea. This can explain turbulence. This ex can explain entropy and chaos. It can explain... Um, one second. It can explain energy conservation. It can explain volume conservation. And um, also momentum conservation. It explains that there must be a thrust in this direction because of the opposing force in here and um, much more things. Also, we will build on, on that a new energy stacking model. On base of this energy stacking model, we will discuss a bit more deeper the momentum perspective or the relation on
on what viewpoint you are considering kinetic energy or, or let's say or finally the momentum yeah different momentums create energy or have a, a energy correlation to each other so so by having attractor points we can stack energy in 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 subsystems and in further chapters we will discuss this a bit more deeper but the most in most impressive uh, conclusion about this is that finally somehow this, this order that is over here uh, you can say this is order is destroyed in okay. so we will not return into order like the potential theory is trying to argue that it will return everything to the original uh, to the original momentum the original speed the original pressure but actually in fluid something happens when there is an acceleration there's no no reason or there's no nothing in this in this um, mechanical system that can put the system back into the original order even if there is the same cross section uh, before and after so so because we obtained a certain kinetic energy by, by this acceleration and because of needing a lower pressure for dynamic motion, which is mandatory, we, after, we, we, let, we then after, we do not re can reestablish order, but we can fulfill momentum conservation we can fulfill volume conservation and energy conservation but order is no more so by modeling or claiming fluid motion uh, as an increase of chaos by receiving dynamic change in the in momentum we always increase the entropy because the return of or the kinetic energy will not return back to its original stage so 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 in average we can fulfill the the boundary conditions to fulfill the um, the volume conservation by the, the equal flow we can fulfill um, energy conservation by remaining the all over all uh, overall energy but the order is no longer um, re-established so the, the order is destroyed and we have something like a resistance so so be, because of having dynamic situation we also need to control that dynamic situation when we have an unlimited acceleration the mass will 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 continue to accelerate to, to um, infinity in our universe it's not possible that uh, mass is accelerating to infinity but finally we receive another um, another stage of, of, of order or chaos as you say as you can say the amount of order measured in a, in a, in a, in a scalar dimension 
So we, we receive less order and more chaos by um, getting dynamic, um, a dynamic change of the fluid motion. In this example, an acceleration or acceleration of fluid acts or results into an uh, in, uh, increase of chaos. Because we cannot um, slow down the kinetic energy of the particles itself, we in a way need to, to, uh, to solve that equation and th this only happens, uh, it is only possible if uh, we remain the kinetic energy of the particle itself but increase uh, the chaos or reduce the order of the mechanic system uh, and by that fulfill the volume conservation. In the next chapters uh, I will go more deeply into all these um, claims that are coming up now with this um, consideration that we have uh, uh, less order, we will have uh, energy stacking of, uh, of, um, of mechanical system that, that they, they get stacked in or, or into subsystems and by that we can solve certain unsolved problems like three body uh, systems and all the other chaotic, chaotic systems that are constrained with uh, this, this, um, this question. And much more, um, yes, acoustics. We also, um, this, this is another point, you now would have question, uh, ask yourself, wait a minute, Bernoulli has measured a lower pressure inside the tube section. Here, the narrow tube section. When he has um, installed a, a, oh, we do it, um, so like tube that has a certain water level. So, and increasing the speed that the, the pressure drops uh, by, by, uh, proportional to speed in square. This is already included in this um, acceleration condition. It will be proportional to v, v square. But it's, it's also observed that, that um, the pressure in here is even lower than over here. But, spoken in this mechanical system, we already have a pressure drop that is proportional to V2. So this is uh, delta P. Uh, delta P. So, so this, um, this delta P that is uh, arguing the acceleration of, uh, of the fluid, the pressure drop, is already proportional to V2, otherwise you don't will receive the um, kinetic uh, um, energy conservation. So, so energy, um, kinetic energy, energy is always proportional to V square. And um, this is already included in this uh, pressure drop, but if you would measure a static pressure tube, when you install it here, you will notice that you will receive an even lower um, lower pressure here. That has to do with uh, mass and inertia of the fluid itself, and also is a reason why there is re a revolving of the of the particles around an attractor. I will discuss this in further chapters. Um, um, either the, the pressure, static pressure tube as well as the revolving of the, the particles around an attractor that has also a link to uh, a new lift or this um, um, theory of laminar separation bubble which I introduced in earlier chapters.
and more. So stay tuned and be excited what will be coming up next when I will explain all these um, other aspects that are hidden inside this model and fulfilling real realistic observation much better than current models that are acting, acting with a lot of uh, improvements to, to argue observed fluid dynamics behavior in reality. Um, current aerodynamics science has still struggles with a lot of uh, contradictions and with this model we can solve all these contradictions uh, much more easily and yes stay tuned and hope I see you next time bye bye